All right, it's another day in Hot Girl's Garage. Woo! And it's 94 degrees here. So today is gonna be my first day of welding class. And for all of you who haven't watched us before, um, I'm a beginner and I may stumble over some things, I may misspeak, um, but it's all in good fun. Uh, today I'm gonna be learning to weld three different types of welds, finishing off with a spot weld. So will I succeed? You'll have to watch to find out. Okay, let's do this. I'm a little nervous, but I'm going into this with an open mind. Here I am putting on a welding apron. I'm not sure it's completely essential for the scope of work, but it makes me feel better. My husband, Tony, is going to be facilitating my welding 101 class today. And we're gonna use a variety of tools and I'll show you those in just a second. Okay, here we're going to take a quick look at some of the tools that we used. We had some welding pliers, 16 gauge sheet metal, welding helmets, welding gun, a couple of clamps, and then we used the angle grinder with an attached paint stripping disc for prepping the metal. We're going to be using a Millermatic 135 portable MIG welder. A couple of dials to pay attention to are the wire speed and the voltage. Wire speed is located up top and we have it set on 45, which works best on sheet metal for automobile use. This bottom dial is for voltage and it is changed depending on the thickness of the sheet metal. So if your voltage is too low and your metal is too thick, you're not going to penetrate the metal. You're only going to heat up the outside of the metal and you won't get a true weld. Now voltage is gonna change depending upon the thickness of the metal. For instance, standard 20 gauge sheet metal will place the voltage around 2.5 and we'll be careful to watch it to see if it needs adjustment. For frame rails or a subframe, a 16 to 14 gauge metal, you'll want to increase voltage to about 4.5 or 5. Also, a side note, the smaller the number gauge, the thicker the metal. Old cars used thicker sheet metal and body panels tended to be somewhere around 20 gauge to 18 gauge, where support structures and frames tended to be much thicker, such as a 10 gauge or larger. All right, so we have adjusted to the appropriate voltage and our metal is clamped down and we are ready to begin welding. Okay, so here is Tony warning me about the arc. Uh, that's just so I don't overreact when the arc begins when I push the welding button. All right, so now I'm putting on my welding helmet feeling a little like Boba Fett right now. Um, while I'm playing around, Tony is plugging in the welder into the power cable. Two or three seconds, you can stay in one place or you can move in a line, that's strictly up to you. So like right here? Yeah. Here? That'll work. Shit. Did I do anything? So like here? Don't weld on that paper sticker. Well, that, let me just go right here. Okay. Now fix your angle a little bit. You don't want to be at this angle. You want to be at this angle. Right here? Yes. Okay. Yeah, still okay. jerk away. That was about two seconds where I can actually see what's going on. Here. Okay. So here's my first attempt at a weld. Not too bad. Didn't spread the weld around as much as I should have. My second attempt was a little bit better. I'm getting more comfortable using the welding gun. And my third attempt, even more comfortable. I'd give it a B plus. So here, Tony has just completed another sample weld. Uh, as you can see, it is nice and round. It's hotter in the center, and that enabled him to penetrate the metal and get it melting. And that way he was able to spread the weld around, spread the pool of metal for a nice, good weld. All right, good news, I have graduated to a butt weld. Named such because you have two pieces of metal butt up against another piece of metal to make a level surface. So to illustrate mistakes to avoid when doing a butt weld, we have showed what happens when we make a gap in the metal and when we don't prep the surface. We're also not gonna turn on the gas. So this made a pretty raggedy weld. 
This is the proper weld. This is the raggedy weld. You can see holes in it, it's not very strong, and it also breaks apart very easily. Not strong at all. And you'll see how it looks different after we prep it. And it's like anything that you paint, walls, furniture, etc. Most of the work is in the prep, but it makes all the difference. In the paint prep, we're going to use a two inch paint stripping disc. This one's a little bit worn down, but it's still gonna get the job done. It screws right into the flexible rubber mandrel on the angle grinder. And this is specifically designed to remove paint and not metal, because when you're prepping the surface, you don't want the metal to thin out. We're gonna do the same prep work on the smaller piece and apply the sanding disc to expose the raw metal. All right, now we have two raw metal surfaces. All right, now we're gonna take away the gap so the two metal surfaces are close together. We're also going to clamp it down and we're gonna make sure our gas is turned on. So all of these steps will set us up for success on this next weld. We're done. You can see the prep work makes all the difference. The prep weld looks far more secure. You can see a big difference between the two welds. Alright, so this means it is my turn and I am clipping my wire stick, getting into position. And remember, this is my first time. I am very slow and I do have a couple of bumps along the way. And here? Whenever you're ready. Is that you can do it right on the seam because you want to join the two pieces of metal together. So you can do it the same way. You're going to go in a circle after a second and a half. <laughs> it's made for my giant head, not for yours. Okay, let me try it again. In just a second, you're going to see me do a little nod thing with my head. Apparently it's a trick used to get your mask in front of your face so you don't disrupt the placement of your hands because when you have the welding mask on, you can't see anything. That view part of the mask is completely dark until you begin to weld. It wasn't quite long enough. Okay. So I didn't count long Correct, enough. Okay. correct. The weld I just completed is the one on the right. Here we go, gonna give it another shot. Ooh, that was not good. The carbon buildup from the other two welds uh -huh. gave us an unclean surface. Got it. All right? Okay, so here we are just getting our sander out again. We're gonna remove the carbon buildup so we have a better weld next time. All that carbon buildup is now gone. Good weld. Good job. Okay, so the butt weld is complete, and now we are just going to prep our surface for the next weld, which is going to be a lap weld. So we're sanding it down, exposing the raw metal, and that little triangle you see right there has already been prepped, and we're going to stick this on the new raw metal and weld them together. We're going to clamp down the triangle so it doesn't move while we try to weld it. Done that. Whenever you're ready. All right, so we let that cool down. Now what you just heard was Tony hammering the new weld with a shaping hammer. Uh, almost every weld that you're going to do with sheet metal, you're going to have to go back and grind it because you don't want it to leave it to look ugly. Um, so if you hammer it down while it's relatively molten, it saves you grinding time. So what you see here is where I burned the corner off completely on the metal. Evidently, I lingered on that area too long. When you're welding a thicker piece to a thinner piece or vice versa, start your arc on the thicker piece. Do your 1.5 seconds on the thicker piece and drag your pool to the thinner piece. If you don't, you'll burn the top piece off. That's 
not bad. That is not bad. Give out this clamp. Yeah, but that's not bad. That is not bad. Good job. So now do I need to grind the in between? Stick out was a little too far away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, the spot weld. Here I am prepping a piece of metal that was drilled specifically for the spot weld tutorial. So for this next weld, we've picked a spot we've already prepped. Here's where technique is really going to come into play. So what I've learned about starting in one section on the thicker metal and going in a circle to spread the pool, it's going to be especially important in a spot weld because I have to join the metal. If I only got the metal inside the hole but it never touches the edges, that top metal piece is going to fall right off. So what I'm going to do is start inside the hole and then after about two seconds, I'm going to start going in a circle until I've firmly overlapped it. Right here, Tony is showing us spot welds on our 1969 Camaro convertible from when this car was assembled. Be sure to subscribe to catch future videos on this car's full restoration. Alright, so I've just clamped down my metal piece that's been prepped for the spot weld. It's sticking up a little bit and it's going to make it very difficult to weld. We beat it with a shaping hammer, but it's, it's still sticking up. Uh, we adjusted the location of the clamp so it's a little bit closer to the hole, but you have to be careful when you do that because sometimes you run the risk of actually welding the clamp to the piece of metal. Alright, so another trick is to hold the piece flat with your left hand while you weld with your right hand as Tony is showing us with a hammer, but that's far too advanced for me. Alright, here goes nothing. I'm about to do the spot weld. Now before I started the weld, I had to readjust because I was at a bad angle with the clamp. You want to make sure that you hold the welding gun somewhere between a 45 and 90 degree angle. Alright, so I am in position. I made a mental note of everything that I need to do for that perfect weld. I'm going to start in the center and then move around the circle clockwise. Take a look. Excellent weld. What a beautiful, beautiful weld. Ladies and gentlemen, she's a natural. Well, I must say, I am pretty pleased with what I accomplished here today. Ladies and gentlemen, she's a natural. Should we beat it? That's a good weld. We waited too long to beat it. Stop. High five. Oh, I just want to interject here. He's talking about the welding fumes. I mean, you did it. You are a natural. Yay. This is not a fluke anymore. You did all of them so perfectly. Now watch this. We'll see if it's strong. That is strong. Yay. See? Look at that. Excellent. I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning for Copyright. All right, so I just finished my first welding class. I went through some rudimentary welding spots. And I'd have to say that last weld, the spot weld, really gave me the boost of confidence that I need to move forward to something more advanced when we start working on our 69 Camaro convertible. And I was very nervous when I started, but uh, walking through those individual steps really, really helped me. I can't wait to restore the car and to be able to help my husband along in that process and it's going to be it's going to be rewarding. I hope he lets me do some of the welding. So if you're out there and you're a beginner and you think it's too intimidating, if you think that there's no way that you can do it, sometimes it just takes diving in, getting the supplies that you need and just going for it, taking that first step. The first step is always the scariest. Um, but go for it. I think you'll have a lot of fun. So stay tuned. We have a number of videos coming up on the 69 Camaro convertible restoration as well as our 71 Camaro project. Um, we open up comments to feedback. We love to hear from you and see what you think about the project. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see future videos on their way. Oh yeah, there's this, um, God, who's that? It's not Bruce, uh, the guy who is the martial arts. There's a good quote that he has, and it says, Bruce Lee? You 
Bruce Lee, yeah, so stop thinking about the project and start taking action. Seeing my husband over the years work on these dramatic transformations of vehicles has, has been awe-inspiring. Far too big of a prospect for me to even consider, but taking these baby steps, let's put it this way, I have a new respect for what he does. I never realized what he was doing in the garage. I would come in periodically and see updates on the project, but I never really knew what all it took. I want to be a part of that process, and so here I am taking those small steps to take part in something that he also enjoys so it can be something that we enjoy together and that I can learn along the way with him. So stop waiting for the motivation to strike and just get started. Be your own motivation. Thanks again and hope to see you next time at Hot Girls Garage.